What's up, everyone? We are live with the quarterfinals of our one K quarterfinal event. Yes. yes, quarterfinals top eight. Top eight with Ragdos mid range versus Ragdos mid range. Ragdos mid range mirror. Who will top deck better? Who will mid range better? Yes. Well, mid ranging better is basically top decking better, right? Yes. Who will draw more Fable of the Mirror Breakers? Look at that, mirror sleeves as well. Yes, so everything is the same. Yes. So we've seen Glenn, uh, he was previously on one of the Swiss rounds earlier on. Mm -hmm. So his list is pretty stock. Uh, you have, you've got, you know, the bone, the... The, the usual. Sorry, the fables, the blood types. Oh, they've started already. And the uh, thought seizures, of course. Thought seizures being thrown out, classic patterns. Uh, yeah. Fatal so, push. They're so excited, <laughs> they're looking at the same side of the board. It's they're like, like oh, oh, it's the same thing. You have a lily, I have a lily. Yep, so Glenn here. Just touching one of Kevin's lilies. So he's gonna let him keep the fatal push. But he's gonna note down the cards. And yeah, it, I, I mean, this is tough, right? Between Lily and Fable. Um, yeah, I think it's tough. Really depends on what Glenn has in hand, I think. It's uh, what Glenn has in hand. It's also, I think, your familiarity with the matchup that you know uh, I how do, the I don't think Fable play. is... I would argue Fable has more right. value, yeah. but Lily has more lockout ability. Yes. So it depends on your your proactive game plan and how you mm -hmm. hope to approach uh, this particular game. So there we go. He Glenn agrees with us. <laughs> he went for the Fable of the Moonbreaker mm -hmm. and Gavin here with the Blood Type, blood type harvest. harvester. Where's his, where's his Blood Token? I don't know. Is that the Blood Type Harvester? Is That's this also like something it. else? Mm. Anyway, thought sees. Okay, it's something. We'll figure out what <laughs> yeah. it is. Does he have any other two drops? Uh, Crocs are. Nope. It is most certainly a blood type harvest. Yeah, there's nothing else. <laughs> it's an all art, I think. Oh, then his blood token is dead. Yeah, oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so, how was that getting for three? And. Oh, Liliana is gone from the second thought sees. But very, very fast uh, clock here because of the two thoughts he's hurting yeah. the four life. Four life is a lot. Four life is a lot. Yeah, and now with the three, the, the three power two, two <laughs> drop. Oh, and another one. Well, that's a real clock. Yeah. That's a real clock. Man, these harvesters are so strong. Mm. So this is a simple game plan. I'm going to curve out, I'm going to play aggressively static creatures, I'm going to smack face. Well, I mean, it makes a blood token. Yeah. It has, it has grind value. Somewhat, yeah. yeah. So, who will win? Ragdos or Ragdos? Gavin looks pretty far ahead at this point. Yeah. Like, uh, Gavin's the yeah. aggressor here. Yeah. So, if Glenn has some answers, that would balance things out. But still, I mean, I think, I think just fighting to parity might be a good plan here. I mean, considering that I think Gavin was on the play. Yeah. Right, so yeah. this is basically the advantage of being on the play here. Uh, and Glenn having to find a way to take back tempo. Mm. I mean, I, I do think the Thought Seizers helped a lot, really. They did, of, but I mean, Thought Seizers on the draw, a lot yeah. weaker than Thought Seizers on the play. So, Gavin tracking one blood token, discarding a herbal, looks like. A land. A land. Getting in for six, six here, but there's going to be a response. Is it a rider? Yep. Yep. So, rider taking out one, but, but then it's another five. two life yeah. card, right? So, down to eight. But the, the, the Murderous Rider has lifelink, mm, mm. so this is relevant. It could be relevant, because it blocks the blood type as well. Yeah. Uh, but Gavin, I mean, Gavin here notably playing a Den of the Buck there. Yeah, nothing else to play, why not? Um, but Murderous Rider is slow as well. It is. If a Murderous Rider come down, comes down turn 4, it means that what only Fatal Push and Cut Down are, are on the table at that point. And then if Liliana comes down, gets rid of the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. But a anyway, there's a the graveyard world. trespasser here. Yeah. So Gavin choosing to exile his own blood type harvester mm -hmm. and <coughs> getting that one life drain. So Glenn also miss, missed the land drop, I think. But I mean, he has enough land oh, at this no, point. He did it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So playing the rider just so to very stem slow. the bleeding. Stem anyway. the bleeding, yeah. but still very slow. Still the very the slow. life gain, the two life is going to be relevant, especially after all the thought seizures. Uh, is that an invoke? It's not invoke. No. Oh no, it's a, it's a swamp. <laughs> That's a very big difference. Yes. It? <laughs> it's a shiny swamp. Mm, fair. 
So we have a trend bar and a push. Yep. So, so sack, push, wow. combat. It goes to bottom. Yep. And going, to yep one. going to one. So any graveyard transfer, crasher. Graveyard transfer can get there? Not sure. Yep, six damage. Very wow, that was this is very fast from Gavin. Yeah, so this is just curving out, smacking face, right? Yeah. Not even caring about disruption mm. or well, a yeah. lot of removal. Yes, just, just threats and removal. Yeah, I think the thought seizures really hurt. Uh, so Gavin, Glenn has lost basically has lost six life, yeah. which is uh, just to himself, right? And what in addition to that, yep, six, two from thought, two thought ah, seizures, and, and then one murderous rider, rider. Yeah. and he didn't get the life back from the murderous rider. Yeah, but he might have two blockers here. Let's see. Nope. Okay, so we have Black Tide Harvester. We have a blocker. We have one blocker. And there is a blood token. So he can still dig for his push if he needs to. <laughs> so Gavin just showing the dread ball there. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> and that's it. So game one to Gavin. Game one to Gavin. Being yeah. on the play uh, in the mirror. But that was fast. That was like less than 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn killing himself didn't exactly help. So on to game two, and Gavin going down a card. So bowling to six. Then of the bugbear, passing to Glenn. So does he have a turn two play here? Is it going to be the harvester? Yep, harvester. Yep. Very strong turn two play. Very strong. Uh, Gavin just drew a dread ball. <laughs> But I don't think Dread Boring Harvester is where you want to be. You probably not. Yeah. It looks. That's in. So what is that? Two. Is that a mountain? Or is no, that that's a dead. Dead. So it's two, two dense at the bottom. Yeah, two dense. Huh. Might as well put them in untapped, right? Yeah, I, I suppose, but you know. So. Uh, it also telegraphs what you have available, which. <laughs> which uh, yeah, which, might, which, which is a thing. I, I value information quite a lot. Mm. So, yeah. Okay, sure. That does seems to be fine. Trespasser, yeah. Trespasser. Probably not going to take the trade. I don't know. No, probably not. Yeah, a trade doesn't seem to be worth it. But it's just good against re point removal because you force the hand discard, yep. right? So they lose a card, they you use up. Oh, well, unless well, you have Lily. Well, that works out. Yep. Perfect answer to the ward ability. I would say that in this situation, Glenn's deck is stronger because now he has obviously stabilized mm. to some degree. He has his Lily out, he Not, has Tempo. I don't know about that because Gavin, look, he has a push and a Dread Ball. There goes Glenn's board. I right. suppose, yeah. So he but has it's still, the answers. But, yeah, yeah, he has the answers. And but Glenn, I mean, if you consider does... like what we mentioned earlier, that Glenn's deck is built to grind. Mm. As Tempo becomes less relevant and as lands are coming to play, I would say that the card advantage might the the ability to obtain that card advantage might really pay off. Well, between Castle Lockwain and Den of the Bugbear, life lost though. Yeah, exactly. And it, and so Den, Den is yeah. going to get there first, yeah. right? So the Bugbear is, is far more aggressive. I think Gavin is just trying to decide whether or not to get rid of the Lily here. I mean, he has to think about, it is really about line up, how, how the cards in the decks line up, right? And whether or not you want to hold back that Dread Bore. What are you, are you okay with taking another mm. discard for that turn, you know, is it worth it or not? I think he might be okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's symmetrical, right? Yeah, it's not, it's exactly. Not like, it's a symmetrical yeah. discard. So I think this is still okay. Yep, so he's agreed with that. No reason to Dread Bore the Lily right now. Mm. <clears throat> but yeah, like you said, I think... At this point, Glenn with his more grindy setup, mm. uh, yeah, it's uh, the discard is gonna hurt him less. It's gonna probably hurt Gavin a bit more. Yeah, yeah. We'll see much much more balanced game this time. Yeah, very uh, interesting still, very dynamic. Kind of depends if Glenn has a land here. I think. So here we have the dread ball. Yeah, dread ball. Wow, pitching Kalitas. Kind of means that he doesn't have a fourth land drop, I think. Yeah, but and he's choosing to to try to race and close out the game yeah. right now. So we're gonna I mean, he is here. he is halfway there, right? He is essentially halfway there. Yeah. Yeah, plusing here, discarding a second lily, Gavin discarding a dread ball. So Gavin seems to be all in on his aggressive plan. Mm -hmm. 
So I suppose this would be Kalidas. Doesn't make sense though because yeah. Lily can just minus and trade. Yeah. Right. But it looks like he's so okay Lily. With it. Yeah. So it's line up, line up theory. So he's forcing the Lily. He wants to trade card for card with the Lily. Mm. Which comes back to what we said again, right? Having a. So he's offering a, a reset Ooh. essentially. Yeah. Pushing the tide, the harvester, and getting a zombie out of it. Okay, so this makes sense now. So, because he had a push in hand, he exiles the blood tide harvester, gets a zombie. Now, Lily, you can't minus Lily yeah. and get rid of Kalitas. Yeah. So now Gavin has finally managed to take back the tempo. Mm. Uh, and I think the earlier plays from Glenn are also very aggressively skewed. Yeah. Right. Because now he's stuck for lands and um, he has to dig for it, which. Looks like he hasn't found any lands. For sure, for sure he's behind. Yeah. I mean, getting rid of the zombie and then minusing to get rid of Kalitas, that's... Okay. So we have so the Murderous Rider. Murderous Rider is pretty good. Stacks up well. Rider is okay. Life loss isn't great. Like... But I mean, he's ahead of life now. Mm. So this doesn't hurt him now. I think just that one copy is probably... In just nice. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want one copy seems one. perfect. Yeah. Okay, so now we're talking about oh look at that, it's Sky Sovereign from the oh, side board. Good. That gets rid of Lily. Yeah. Just straight up. And exactly what I was saying, my vehicles in this matchup are so hard to get rid of. That's why I was just about to say like Bedevil is a thing. Oh yeah. I Actually Bedevil's a strong card. Yeah, I kind of think they they could put, you know, two copies. Just for some artifact removal. So we have the children. The children. <coughs> yep, so drawing a card, losing two life here. Not able to cruise Sky Sovereign. Mm. This is actually really tough. Well, he could again. cruise Sky Sovereign. He has a dead at the bot there. Oh, yeah, he could. Yeah. Oh, and he has Fable. Fable plus uh, Zombie. Because I believe it's Crew 3, right? Is it? Is it 5? Is it 5? Sky Sovereign is hard to crew. <laughs> crew 3. Crew 3. Yeah. Not that hard. Mm. Oh, it's 5 mana to cast. Yeah, 5 to cast. 5 to cast. So I knew there was a 5 in there somewhere. Okay, so we the have shaman. the Shaman. And this is actually quite a fast clock. So 6 6 6 is a 3 turn clock. But next turn he can just activate the bug bear. But I mean, Glenn doesn't have to rush. Whenever he draws a card, he's gaining life. Mm. He can take the six damage, and it's then still a lot. yeah, it's still <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still a lot. But in order to do that, basically, uh, Gavin has to go to no blockers, right? Because a double crew means that yeah. the blockers are down, yeah. and True. then four damage in from Children. uh from Children is a very dangerous mm. place to be. And then losing two from drawing a card. Yeah. So he's actually at three if he goes. Yeah. In. So yeah, no attacks. Yeah. The Children manages to stem off the attack. But I don't know, would, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, I guess you're right because if he doesn't find a removal for shoulder, then. Mm. So then, this is uh, a safer line. It, yeah, this a safer is a safer line. line. He's also at half the life to go yeah. in. The decks are very even. It's really down. I think in this situation, it's down to top decks, right? It's like you find removal for children, or do you swing in, mm. right? It's basically come down to that. I, I guess this is the point where Fable comes in. So here <laughs> we have the Fable. So Fable, once it flips, it's gonna get so much value. Yeah. And this is how this is how the deck just grinds out, grinds out the game. Just making copies of a shaman or a zombie. So we basically reached the mid mid to late game already. Yeah. Uh, and now the decks are really playing this mid-range versus mid-range plan. Although the children is just killing Gavin. Yeah. So but it's not like he has no 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 answers in his deck, right? The lack of draw though, because the deck is so aggressively skewed, it doesn't have the filter to look for the answers when he needs it. Oh, on time. and the problem is that he doesn't want to draw because of children. So yeah. It's stopping the fable value yeah. as well. Oof, so push, push getting rid of the den, but uh, he does crew up the Sky Sovereign. 
has to go for it. Yeah. We'll probably uh, there's no gonna it's likely gonna be no blocks here. Yeah, my guess is no blocks, and then try to close out. Oh, oh, there we go. Very nice. What did he? What What did he? What did he, What did the revolt trigger off? Treasure. The treasure. treasure off. So Shaman made a treasure. Shaman made a treasure. Right. Use a treasure. I mean, revolt was already triggered because right. then then or then went. When, when, yeah. So Gavin here is turning things around. Hearse. Yep, discarding the hearse to uh, Fable. <coughs> getting in the rider, but that's not gonna do it. Because Sky Sovereign just gets rid of the rider, yep. I think. So yeah, it's really the battle of the top decks. Battle of the sideboard is sideboard and top deck, yeah. Whoever draws better, the mid range versus mid range, really. So three damage going at the at the thing. Mirror's Rider not is, great. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem great. Uh, the be double would have been. Unlicensed hers, I think, is not great. I I, I mean. You compare yeah. hers to Hurst Trespasser, right? Yeah. Yeah. Trespasser, I think, is just so much. Threat better. density, I think threat density is really big in this mm. matchup because even if you don't have the removal, if you are stable, uh, equivalent on board state, having blockers up, trading one for one, that's really where you want to be. Yeah. The fact that um, Sky Sovereign actually dodges Fatal Push is a big thing. Yeah, it is big. I think that's a big thing, yeah. Yeah, it is big. There's no artifact removal. Where's the artifact removal? It doesn't exist. Bedevil. Bedevil. Bedevil's a good card. Bedevil is so good. Um... What's that? Baleful Mastery. I like that. So yeah, very, very tuned list and well played by Gavin. Yeah, Gavin uh, played very well. Yeah, well done. That was 22 minutes for the quarterfinals.